What's up, everybody? It's me, E-Man, from E-Man's Movie Reviews. Guys, after a year and some change of talking about recast T'Challa and, you know, ta- loving the Black Panther franchise, I have finally had the opportunity to sit down and have a conversation with one of the head executives of Marvel Studios, and that is Nate Moore. Uh, in this conversation, we are going to talk about a number of things. Um, you know, I, like I only wish I had more time to ask more questions. Um, but just to kind of give you a little background, Nate Moore is like the spearhead of the Black Panther franchise um, and the character within Marvel Studios. Um, in other words, we would not have uh, Black Panther if it were not for Nate Moore. Now, at the same time, uh, Nate Moore is also responsible for other decisions that are made uh, within the franchise as well. So um, I had a couple questions for him. And I was very, very appreciative of the fact that they even gave me that opportunity to talk to him. So check out what he had to say. Uh, Emmanuel Noisette um, from E-Man's Movie Reviews, the movie blog uh, out here in Chicago. Clearly with the passing of Chadwick, you know, that was, I, I, I can't imagine what type of emotional burden it had to be for you, the cast and the crew to like move forward. Right. right? But can you... Can you talk about the decision to use the real life tragedy and impose it on the fictional character of T'Challa? Because while it can be cathartic for some, it can also be triggering to relive that pain again. So can you talk about the decision to go forward? Yeah, I mean, it was, look, uh, Chadwick's passing uh, uh, was was shocking to us all and, and hit us all a bit differently, but but he... I can't say this enough, like, he was such an impressive person beyond the performer mm-hmm. um, and had relationships with all the cast and Ryan and myself who, who got to know him through Civil War. And, and, and you, you, have, you have the very real conversations of, should we even make a movie? Right. <laughs> right? right, right, right. Um, certainly not all movies need sequels. There's been amazing movies that Facts. are one and done. Um, uh, um, and those were conversations that we had. Uh, and Disney at no point said, you have to make a sequel. They said, we'll do whatever you feel is right. Oh. Um, uh, uh, and then you start to think about, and and no one can really know, right? But I go, oh, I I think Chad would have wanted us to make a sequel because he knew how much Wakanda meant to people. Mm-hmm. Um, but people make movies. Movies aren't movies aren't plopped off an assembly line. Mm-hmm. We as people who are dealing with the loss of a person have to be able to believe in and make a movie, uh, and 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 we couldn't figure out how to get our heads around making a movie with another T'Challa mm-hmm. is the truth. Mm-hmm. Um, so now you're now you got some cognitive dissonance, right? Got to make you want to make a movie because mm-hmm. man, what kind of means a lot. Yeah. Can you make a movie with your looking at somebody saying that's not my friend? Yeah. Every day. Mm-hmm. I I couldn't, um, but I understand I understand the conversation. Okay. And I and I don't think it's wrong. Okay. I think it's just. We had to make the movie we knew how to make, you right. know, and and so um, so making the movie about the passing of T'Challa felt like the best way to honor both, mm. um, and 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 I think the cast agrees. I won't speak for them. I'll let them speak for it. I mm. I, I think in talking to them, I I think they agree. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was hard. It was a hard process. It was a hard process. I mean, we lost him during COVID. Yeah. So it wasn't even like we all got to like collect double the pain. Yeah. yeah, you can't. I mean, we all experienced losses during COVID that you didn't really get to grieve because COVID prevented that. Right. Um, and, and being together and making this film was, was the first time we were all together to be able to talk about that. Yeah. And then the process of making the movie allowed people to pour some of those emotions into their roles, into their reads, into what it was. Um, and by the way, our crew lost him too, because a lot of our crew was the same crew. Mm-hmm. So we made the movie that we th- we thought we could make in a way that felt respectful to the legacy of the man and to the world. And I think audiences are allowed to feel how they feel about it. Mm-hmm. And I will never tell anybody how to feel about make- watching this movie. I hope it's cathartic. Mm-hmm. You, could be, you could be 100% right though. It might trigger some people. And I hope that's not the case. Mm-hmm. Um, audiences are gonna have to tell us. You know, right. So um, after hearing the decision not to recast, Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I I don't know how privy you were to it or not, but like, you know, 
prompted me to go ahead and start a little petition. I, I saw. <laughs> no, no big deal, right? And but the whole purpose was always to have a conversation sure. because, you know, the love and admiration that I had for the character and for Chadwick yep. was something, you know, especially the first movie, just being so impactful, right? Sure. Um, I guess my question is more so like, what what was your reaction when you when you heard of the petition or the hashtag or the conversation? What, yeah. How, how, what, what kind of conversations were happening at, at Marvel with the cast crew, whoever? Yeah, I think it. I, um, I, I get it. <laughs> I, I mean, I you know, I get it. Like I I, I don't I don't. I certainly wasn't like that's crazy. I was like, oh, that's yeah. yeah. I get I get that point of view, mm -hmm. um, and I understand why people were in such, so inspired by the man and the character, and I. And it's a loss. I mean, it's yeah. a loss. There's no way, way to say it. Um, I think that 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 doesn't mean that people can't be inspired by the new Black Panther. Sure. And I think that doesn't mean that people can't be inspired by Wakanda post T'Challa. Mm -hmm. um, I think, and I hope that people give the movie a chance and and watch it, and then and then if they still feel that way, that's okay. Mm -hmm. Like that is that is within everybody's right, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I hope they give the movie a chance. Sure. I hope they watch it. Yeah. Um, and I and I hope they like it. Mm -hmm. Boy, that's the only reason we're making this movie is for fans to like it. Sure. You know. Well, you heard it from the man himself. Um, let's see, just a couple of quick thoughts. I mean, they, the people at Marvel. As I've said from the very beginning, you know, they are human, right? And what I at least appreciated from Nate Moore's comments here is that, you know, he acknowledges that, right? He acknowledges the fact that, you know, they were just, I don't know, almost emotionally confined to a place where they couldn't tell any other story. They didn't, they couldn't see any other way to tell Black Panther Wakanda forever, except for the way that they did. Um, now, hey, you know, never mind. A lot of other people, a lot of fans have talked about different alternatives, <clears throat> you know, like the blip theory, you know, which you could check out on my channel. Um, but, you know, in respect to the actual cast and crew, um, for, for their own reasons, again, because they're dealing with grief and mourning, um, they could not imagine someone else in the role of T'Challa played by Chadwick Boseman. I mean, make of that what you will. Um, I know some people will be like, well, they're actors and actors have the job of like literally pretending to be someone else and interact with. Yes, that's true. Um, you know, could they have delayed the movie? Sure, they could have. But as you heard from Nate Moore, I mean, they're, they, they, had to make a movie they they wanted to make a movie disney I, I thought it was interesting disney said we'll do whatever you want you know what i mean um so they had freedom clearly to do whatever they wanted in this movie um personally i think it would have been better to just do a disney plus series and just let more time uh you know happen let them grieve let everyone process and then eventually move on but this is the decision they chose um, something else that he, uh, he said that I thought was pretty interesting was he acknowledged that there's a level of cognitive dissonance going on, you know, like you lost a real person, but at the same time you have to like, do you move forward with this movie? And I agree with him based at least off of what I've heard, uh, from Chadwick Boseman's family, uh, from his friends, from his interviews. Um, I agree with him that Chadwick absolutely would have wanted the franchise to continue. He understood how important um, the, the Black Panther franchise was to people and how inspirational it was for young people as well. So it's absolutely true that Chad would have wanted uh, the franchise to go on. Now, would he have chosen, you know, would he have been OK with like everything else they did? I don't know. I don't know. Personally, I don't think as, I don't think so. But. We'll leave that for that, right? Um, but I, I appreciate the fact that he could acknowledge, yeah, there, there there's some cognitive dissonance because um, you understand, I think, that you're caught between a rock and a hard place. And I'm not talking about just the decision to recast or not recast. I'm also talking about, you know, like 
it's going to be difficult on how much of the real life trauma you want to put into the fictional storytelling. Now, you know, that has always been something I have been um, very critical about um, because of the nature of the story and the nature of like the real life events. Um, But again, I think that it is noteworthy to recognize that they noticed that, that Marvel understood that, you know what, we're in a position where like, we're just not going to win. So for them, they have to tell a story that's true for them. Ryan Coogler was also in an interview not too long ago where he had mentioned, um, you know, he, his job as a director is to tell a story that's true for him, right? Like, and he has to convince everyone else on set, the cast and crew, that like, yo, this is the direction. I believe in it, so please believe in it with me. So, you know, this was the mindset that they had, and, you know, it's kind of like it is what it is. But I think the most important thing that he also mentioned here was, one, audiences are entitled to feel how they want to feel. So, in other words... If you loved the decision that they made with this movie, great. You're entitled to feel that way. If you hated what they did, great. You're entitled to feel that way. And I respect the fact that Marvel is not trying to, you know, doll this up or cover this up and say stuff like, well, we made this for the fans and this is the best way to do it. No, like we told the story that we could tell. And if you love it, great. If you don't, we understand. I think that is fair to at least say and acknowledge. So I do appreciate that. And what else did he say? Audiences are going to have to tell them. They're going to have to tell them. So he's asking for people to just give the movie a chance, which I agree with. I do agree. Like, go watch the movie. Now, I'm not going to tell you how you should watch the movie, but go watch the movie and then go tell Marvel how you feel. Go let them know. Because they're listening, you know, Marvel's always listening. They always listen. They might not always acknowledge it, but they always listen to what the fans are saying. So um, I I absolutely uh, would suggest go ahead. If you've seen Black Panther Wakanda forever, go on and let them know how you really feel. Go on the Twitter, go on the Instagram, TikTok, whatever. Let them know how you feel. If you loved it, tell them. If you didn't, tell them. Let them know because we are never going to get the type of content that we want if the creators are not in tune with what we're actually looking for. And yes, I know we don't own the IP and stuff like that, but we're still the consumers. I want people to remember, if we don't pay for something, There are no creators that are going to create anything. We're not going to get movies if we don't pay for them. So it is a symbiotic relationship, you know, that works in tandem. So uh, please, please go tell Marvel how you feel. Now, last thing, of course, um, I went ahead and asked them straight up, like, how'd you feel about recast T'Challa? How'd you feel about the petition? And as you can see, um, I think that he, you know, he's like, look, you're not wrong. Like. He understands the conversation. He wasn't disrespectful of it. He wasn't like, you know, saying, oh, this is a terrible thing. And how dare you guys, you know, uh, want T'Challa recast and all that. He was like, no, I understand. I get it. You know, and we're going to do what we're going to do. And y'all can feel how you want to feel. And guess what? Again, much respect to that. Because it would be easy for him to slander, you know, hundreds of thousands of fans out there or millions who really love T'Challa, not the mantle of Black Panther, but T'Challa, it'd be really easy for them to just be like, oh, man, you guys are trolls or whatever. But no, he actually respects the conversation, and I think that goes a long way. So I am appreciative of the fact that not only has he heard all 60,000-plus people that have signed the petition and all the people that are making recast T'Challa or T'Challa trend on social media, I think that is great. I love it, and I appreciate that uh, as well. Now, I don't know about that whole, like, you know, can be inspired, like, people can be inspired by the new Black Panther. Personally, I'm just not a fan of substitution. I don't think that, you know, hiding 
characters behind a mantle is a good way to tell stories in the future. I think it's going to create a bit of disconnect because the way audiences tend to connect and relate to characters, even if they have mantles, you need time with the character. You need like forget the mantle. We care about characters because characters define the mantles, right? Would you really care about Captain America if Steve Rogers was done after the first movie? Then it went to Bucky in the second movie. Then it went to Sam in the third movie. You wouldn't care. You just wouldn't care. Like you don't have enough time to like gravitate to the characters. But we do care about Steve Rogers because we had like three movies with him. You know, four or five if you count the others. You know, so all I'm saying is that I hope Marvel is not reliant on the idea that as long as we got someone in the mask, it's okay. No, 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 no. Build up the characters for us all, please. Anyway, thank you so, so much for watching my interview with uh, Marvel executive producer uh, Nate Moore. Stay tuned, though. Stay tuned. Um, I do have another part of this conversation. Unfortunately, I could not post it because of spoilers. And, um, you know, there is an embargo, so I can't post it until like almost a week or so from the day you see this video. So stay tuned. Um, I'll, I'll give you a little sneak peek of what is to come uh, and what I asked them. So uh, with the whole campaign movement in mind and given the post credit scene, Mm -hmm. Can you talk about like did the did the fan desire influence any of that or or talk about what does legacy mean given the ending of the Yeah, film? look, the ending of the movie ironically. Stay tuned. That is definitely a conversation you don't want to miss because um he said some stuff in there that shocked me. Like I was just like word word that that's what you Listen. Anyway, what did you think about Nate Moore's comments? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. All right, thank you all so much for taking the time to watch my video. I really appreciate it. If you're new here and you like what you see, don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and don't forget to hit that bell so you don't miss out the next time I drop a video. I've got more videos and reviews to do for you all, and until next time, I'll see you all later.